Welcome to... No, no, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this. I got my dad's shoes on. All right, Stel. This blaster sucks. And today I'm going to explain all the reasons why I think that is. So the Nerf Torrent is a 2024 release out of Hasbro in the Nerf Pro series. It says it's for professionals, and as such, I'm going to compare it to another professional blaster that is released right next to it. <sighs> now I know the cardinal sin of Nerf blasters is daring to compare them to Dart Zone products, but not only are these two blasters right on the same shelf right next to each other, but this time they're actually trying to accomplish the exact same goal. So we've actually got clearance to talk about the Dart Zone Aeon Pro X in comparison to this... <sighs> this product. But we'll get into everything in due time. Right now, we're going to put you all the way up here. We're going to give you a nice little shelf. We're going to put this hat that I accidentally stole from someone one time when I went to Six Flags. I'm going to put that right there. And it's just going to hold you up right there. Because we got to talk about the Nerf Pro Torrent. Because this thing is a hot topic on the market. And everyone wants to freaking hear about it. So let's go. When you buy a Nerf Pro Torrent from the store, you are going to get one Nerf Pro Torrent with the stock included. One Nerf Pro Magazines, which we will address in just a moment. Fifteen of these. <coughs> 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 Ahem, darts, which I will also address in just a moment, and one pair of these safety glasses, which are exactly the same as the ones that came with the Hyper Blasters, and the exact same ones that came with the Gel Fire Blasters, and the exact same ones that came with the frickin' Strife Facts. I've got so many of these, please take them! <laughs> And like everything, we're gonna start with the design, because we've got a design and a half to talk about. First, I gotta get all the darts out of the couch, get out of the couch, and now we can talk about the design. I love the way that this blaster looks. It looks so cool! It's such a simplistic little design, but at the same time, it's so futuristic and complicated. And if you were to take the stock off, like, if I could just take the stock off, there we go, then it actually looks kind of like a pistol. And when you actually treat this thing like a pistol, I love the back end that it has. It just looks so badass for literally no reason. The front end of this thing looks really nice. It's got this kind of inset angle where everything just kind of sinks in towards the middle barrel, and it's a really cool futuristic looking aesthetic. Oh, did you think that they would paint Nerf Pro on the other side? You freaking dumbass! What about the ergonomics? This blaster has a main grip, a pump grip. No, it has two pump grips. Don't let me fool you there. And it has this stock that's included, but you're never gonna freaking use it, and I will explain why. But first, we gotta talk about the main grip. It is gargantuan. It is so big, and I understand why. It has to fit a magazine in there, but still, it is a really, really big main grip. And even with the size of the main grip, there's no reason for the dovetail to be so aggressive. The dovetail is a little bit lower than you would want it to be. You'd want it to be up here, but it's like all the way down here for some reason. So you hold the trigger in a really awkward way, and it just doesn't feel right to hold this blaster exactly right. They could have moved that up because, I mean, the mag's going up there. Why, why the real estate space there? As for the pump grip, you're probably thinking it's this thing right here, but it's actually this entire piece. So yes, when you prime the blaster, the whole thing moves back and forth. And as a pump grip, it is really, really comfortable. You can easily get all four fingers around it, though I do think it's a little bit small. It'll probably end up being alienating to someone with gargantuan Wreck-It Ralph hands. And unless you are Wreck-It Ralph, you'll probably be all right. You can put your thumb on the front of it just for all things good. And as for the top prime here, you can actually put your hand right up here and use it as a top prime blaster, which literally puts it in the same freaking league as this. I'll get to this later, but but still, we're, I'm just making a point here. As for the stock, it is way too short. It is half of a stock, and as such, it could be a lot longer. Luckily though, as I demonstrated a moment ago, this stupid thing comes off, and so you can put bigger stocks on it. There's only one problem with that. If you put literally any stock on it other than like a Maxim Pro stock, it becomes way too big. So how does this stupid nugget work? Well, you take your 15 Dart Nerf Pro magazine here, look at how expensive and flashy it is, and yeah, these are expensive. You take it, you shove it up in the grip like it's nobody's business. You take this thing, you pull it backwards, you push it forwards, you fire once, and it doesn't have slam fire, even though it really feels like it should. 
And a quick overview on the mag included, it's actually really nice. I actually really like these magazines that come with the blaster. They're made with incredibly thick plastic, are lubricated very well, and just look really nice. They also work super smoothly in this blaster. This is where all the positive stuff ends and where the real crap hits the fan. First of all, I'm gonna try and take the magazine out with one hand, something you should really be able to do on any blaster. Even if it has a mag release up here, you should be able to do it. All right, here we go. Okay, so if I could just, nope, nope, I can't. If we could just do, hang on, hang on. I got this, I got this, I got, I got, I got, th nope, nope, we're, it's not, okay, can I please pull it? Nope, okay, maybe if I prime the blaster. Yeah, no, you were guys, you guys are sitting through this nonsense. Okay, can, if I do this, and I just, if I can freaking, ah, it's, it's heavy, okay. Okay, all right, attempt number two, we're doing this again, if I can just do, push it, there we go, okay, there we go, we got it, even though it's got a skinny pusher, I had to prime the blaster to take the mag release out, that is horrible, this magazine release feels like it was made out of the hatred of every demon under the earth, look at this, why is this button so freakishly heavy, look at how much I'm straining my thumb to keep the button held down, the actual mag release freaking pusher button spring thing here is probably heavier than the spring that's in the catch. That's how hard it is to take the mag out. You get back up there, you stupid hat. That's how hard it is to get the magazine release out. Why is it so hard? This big puffer fish looking idiot has a skinny pusher in it. There is no reason why I should have to prime the blaster in order to get the magazine out. It is literally designed for you to be able to just put the mag in and take the mag out without having to prime or fire the blaster at all. But you still have to do it anyway. Because look, even with the skinny pusher in there, it's still thick enough to where it grips around the sides of the magazine lips, which literally means it's false advertising. It says it has a skinny pusher, but it acts like it doesn't. The trigger pull is fine. I don't have any complaints there. It's a really nice snappy trigger pull that gets the job done very well. Oh, right, so what about the dots? You've been complaining so much about the blaster. What about these brand new prestigious Nerf Pro dots that this stupid nugget comes with? Because obviously these were one of the biggest selling points. The fact that these are different than the Strife X dots, so these obviously have to be better, right? These are worse. These are not only worse than the Strife X darts, they are worse than the Ember dart. You know, the bottom of the bottom tier, bottom of the barrel consumer grade crap darts that you can get for a hundred for a dollar at freaking Walmart. That's not exactly true, but still, you can get these for super freaking cheap off of Walmart store shelves. They're practically begging you to take these from Walmart. Yes, I would way rather recommend you guys invest in these stupid idiots rather than these stupid idiots. And you guys may be asking why that is. It is very simple. The glue that holds the dart heads onto these Nerf darts is the worst setup I have ever seen in my life. For example, with the Ember darts and with pretty much every other type of half length and full length dart ever created, it is a tube of foam that a bit of glue is pushed into. It is pushed into the tube and then a small rod coming out of the bottom of the middle of the dart head goes down into the tube and it adheres from the inside inside out. Well, what these freaking darts do is there is a flat thing of glue pasted onto the top of the foam, and then these are haphazardly squished down onto the top. What does that mean? Hmm, that's funny. I can squeeze the sides of the dart head without any glue jutting into my fingers and creating divots. Let's see if the same thing goes for the, the Nerf dart. See if I can get a good grip on it right here. All right. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. There we go. I'm just squeezing it pretty lightly. Oh wow, that looks like a divot to me. These things actively hurt your fingers. And what that means is not only does that mean that they're incredibly cheap and glue just falls off of the tops of them, but it also basically acts like any form of cancellation to any barrel seal that these things might be able to make, which means that you will get tons upon tons of squibs with these, like it's nobody's business no matter what blaster you put them in. People blamed this blaster and the Nerf Pro 
sender for getting squibs with these darts, but it doesn't matter what blaster you put them in. I put them in the Mark IV, I put them in the Aeon Pro up there, I put them in every single blaster that I own that has a form of barrel seal, and all of them without fail squibbed and squibbed and squibbed. It was actually as reliable as using these things. I'm not even joking. These darts are no less reliable than these ones with the inset dart heads because of the freaking ring of glue around the top. That's how bad these darts are. It's horrible. And that's really depressing because the actual heads of these darts are really well made with really thick, well-made rubber that absorbs impact well and maintains FPS and accuracy for a very, very long time. <laughs> I haven't even addressed the biggest problem that this thing has. <laughs> Let's take a look at the front muzzle end. Do you see the problem yet? One, there's no scar muzzle. And there's no way to put one on. So there you go. You can't get any form of accuracy out of this blaster past like 20 or 30 feet. But that's still not the worst problem. If you actually look in there, do you see that barrel material? Do you get it yet? Do you understand? It's plastic. It's not metal. It's not aluminum. It's not brass, it's plastic. Also, I somehow forgot to mention that this thing has the world's most disgusting feeling prime when you actually pull it back. Do I have to do this? What the f- So yeah, what mod potential does this thing have? Actually, quite a bit. Unfortunately, you have to reverse engineer the entire stupid mechanism that they designed incorrectly in order to actually get any mods done on this stupid nugget. But it could be done. So what do I personally think of this blaster, and do I think that you guys should take a look at it? Um, uh, it, it's time. Um, okay. Yeah, um, this is five dollars cheaper. The plastic it's made with is actually better. It still has an end strike stock attachment point on it. It's a bit smaller. The grip is smaller and actually wieldable by human hands and can be switched out for any form of airsoft like M4 style grip. It's got a mag release that actually does its job properly. It has a safety that isn't ugly and horrendous. It has a priming handle that isn't just made out of hate. It actually has a metal barrel, and it's got a spot to put a scar muzzle on the front. I don't know, it's a pretty tight competition. The torrent is a titanic waste of money. There is literally no reason to look into this blaster unless you really, 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 really like the design. Because if you do, I completely understand that. This blaster looks really stupidly cool and modifying one of these to be practical and do its job really well is probably worthwhile if you like the design. But for anyone else, just get an Aeon Pro X instead. Seriously, I cannot say that enough. The Aeon Pro X is objectively a way better blaster than the Nerf Pro Torrent in its stock configuration. After you modify these, I don't know. It pretty much just comes down to which one you prefer more and if you have angled talon mags or standard talon mags. But still, I would still probably prefer the Aeon Pro X. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.